In this third and final video, we will talk about two other types of vaccines in development for COVID-19 disease. And firstly, we will talk about live virus weakened vaccines. In the past, several successful vaccines, like the oral polio and the measles, mumps and rubella vaccines, used this strategy. As the name of this category makes clear, they do contain a live component. Usually, the virus is weakened by a series of passages through another host, often a tissue culture, an animal or an egg for multiple generations. This series of passages results in a mutated virus that differs from the original and can cause only mild infection. Nowadays, the weakening process is even possible in a more precise way, either by deleting or modifying specific viral genes. Currently, only a few vaccines implement this strategy, and only one of them is in the clinical phase of evaluation. The whole mechanism of immunization usually is almost identical to that produced by a natural infection. The virus can replicate to a limited extent in some cells, without of course causing the disease, and the immune system responds accordingly. An advantage of this is that they promote a stronger immune response, possibly requiring even a single dose of the vaccine. They constantly stimulate the immune system so that it has enough time to produce memory cells. A disadvantage is that a rare mutation may allow the virus to revert to a previous state of increased virulence. This means that extensive testings should be made, which will inevitably lead to longer periods of vaccine development. Another possible disadvantage is a potential inability to administer this vaccine to immunocompromised patients, pregnant women, etc. The last category is called subunit vaccines. Subunit vaccines contain only a part of the virus, and so they do not contain live components of the pathogen. An example is the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein that binds to a receptor and helps the virus enter the cell. Virus-like particles, or VLPs, are another type of this category of subunit vaccines. They consist of an empty cell made by the viral structural proteins. The genetic material that encodes these proteins is inserted in an expression system, usually yeast, insect or mammalian cells. The cells in this expression system produce the viral proteins that self-assemble and form a virus-like particle. This particle has no genetic material, it's an empty cell. And because it resembles the virus, our immune system attacks it. Because they do not contain any genetic material, they do not replicate, and they also do not cause an infection. Several vaccines use VLPs, like hepatitis B and human papillomavirus vaccines. Companies like Glaxo and also others implement the strategy of subunit vaccines. The Canadian company Medicago uses plants as an expression system to produce VLPs for COVID-19 disease. Some of the advantages of subunit vaccines are that they do not contain any live components, and therefore there is no risk of inducing the disease. Because of that, they have fewer side effects and they are safe and stable. A disadvantage is that the immune response is less potent and they may need two administrations, and in some cases also an adjuvant, in order to stimulate a strong and effective immune response. Also a problem is that we have to determine which part of the virus can cause this strong immune response, and even if we achieve that, it is not guaranteed that the immune system will form a memory for future response. So, this is it. Thank you all for watching. Take care.